In example three, we're going to solve a problem using the quadratic formula. It says solve using the quadratic formula, give an exact answer and an approximation to the nearest hundredth, if there is one. So when it comes time for the test, part of your standard is going to say just give exact answers, and another part will say just give approximate answers. So you're going to have to be able to do both. On the test, you'll only do one or the other. But as we go through the notes, we're going to do both so you know what they look like. First thing we're going to do is we're going to start by labeling our A, B, and C values. Remember, A is the number in front of our x squared. Since there's nothing in front of our x squared right now, it's understood that there's a 1 there. So A for this problem is 1. B is the number in front of our x, so B is 5. C is the number that is our constant, which is negative 6. And then from here, what we're going to do is we're going to find our discriminant. That will tell us what type of answers we can expect to see. Our discriminant, remember, is b squared minus 4 times a times c. This is the number underneath that radical. So we have a 5 for our b squared, so 5 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 6. Next, you would just plug this whole thing into your calculator. 5 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 6. And if you do that, you should get 49. Remember, you can always pause, type it in the calculator, make sure you're typing things in correctly. Now, once we have our discriminant, we're going to go ahead and plug it into our actual formula. So let me write the formula down just so we remember. x is equal to the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So when we plug this in, first thing we're looking at is the opposite of b. Since b is a positive number, the opposite of a positive would be a negative. So we have negative 5 plus or minus the square root. Now remember, the square root is b squared minus 4ac. That's the number that goes underneath. That's our discriminant. So this number we found here is going to go underneath here. So that 49 is what's underneath there. And we're dividing all of this by 2 times our a value, which is 1. Thinking about our discriminant here, our discriminant 49 is a perfect square. So we should get two positive answers, and they should be nice rational numbers. So let's continue to solve. We get negative 5 plus or minus. The square root of 49 is 7, all divided by 2. So now what we're looking at is we have two answers that we need to keep going with. We have one where we're going to add the negative 5 and the 7, and we have one where we are going to subtract the negative 5 and the 7. So let's set up both of those problems. The first one is negative 5 plus 7 divided by 2, and our other one is negative 5 minus 7 divided by 2. For the first one here, negative 5 plus 7 is 2, and if we divide that by 2, we get an answer of 1. Here, negative 5 minus 7 is negative 12. If we divide that by 2, we get an answer of negative 6. These are exact answers, 1 and negative 6. So we're going to write them in the exact answer. So we have, actually, let's say x equals 1 and negative 6. Now, if I was asking for an approximate answer, there is nothing to round these two. These both are rational numbers and they're whole numbers. So even with the approximate answers, we're still going to just write in what we have. There's no need to round, but x is still going to be equal to 1 or negative 6. So depending on which test you get, whether it's exact or approximate, your answers will be 1 or negative 6. If you have questions, let me know.